Growing up, my brother Jamie was never somebody you would refer to as a great student. Uh, I think if he's watching this, he'd probably agree with me as well. Uh, he had more fun playing sports and messing around with his friends than he did going to school. And that's very normal. And uh, he always kind of struggled and didn't really enjoy it until high school he found printing, the world of printing. And when I mean print, I mean ink on paper. In our high school, we went to it a big print class inside of it. And this very quickly became his passion. Uh, he learned more about printing really fast, became a great printing student, uh, went to college as a print management major, and for the last 15 years has made his career in the printing world and done quite well. Um, and to this day, if you bring up, uh, if you give him a magazine or something, he looks at it and he examines it and he looks at the ink on the paper and he can tell you exactly what machine they used to put that ink there and how they used it and all that fun stuff. Uh, to me, I look at him and my eyes completely glaze over and I go, how the heck do you know that and how can you be so excited talking about that? Well, I have my own version of that. My own version of that is income taxes on retirees. Uh, yep, it's gonna put most people to sleep, but I will tell you, I get kind of excited talking about that because it's a huge deal and it's something people aren't talking about. And once you understand it, I think it's something that you can learn to take seriously as well. Now, when I talk about income taxes, I'm explicitly we're talking about taxes on your income. I'm not talking about sales taxes or property taxes or those other taxes that retirees do pay, but I'm talking about income taxes. And in your working years, you actually don't have a ton of control. You've got a paycheck, you've got income coming in the door, and other than putting money in your 401k, some charitable contributions, how you structure your mortgage, there's not a lot you can do. But in your retirement years, you have a lot more control about something we, us dorky accountants refer to as revenue recognition, when you decide to recognize income. And when we talk about taxes, I usually break it down into the fact that there's two different types of taxes. And the first type of tax is one that you don't necessarily have to pay. And I always tell people, I think we should come to an agreement. If there is a tax that you don't necessarily have to pay, let's try and find a way for you not to pay that tax. And people are usually pretty good about that. But there's a second type of tax. And that second type of tax is one that no matter what, come hell or high water, you're going to pay that tax. Either you're going to pay it while you're alive or you're going to pay it when you're gone. You're going to pay that tax. And if that type of tax exists, your goal, your single goal for that should be to pay the cheapest amount humanly possible. My wife, um, she's an avid coupon clipper and uh, one of her favorite stores is Kohl's. And the other day I went to get something for her from Kohl's and the lady at the cash register asked me, do you have any coupons? To me, I, I don't even think about coupons. And the lady at the cash register has told me, you can't buy this unless your wife gives you coupons. And my wife was very grateful to the lady at the, at the, at the cash register, but that's the type of, of spending that we have. And right now, if you can find a way to cut taxes, that's no different than getting the Kohl's buy one, get one 50% off sale. Those taxes are going to impact how much you spend in retirement more than any single variable. Now, when we talk about those taxes, explicitly for most people, it's the taxes on your IRAs and your 401ks that you have yet to pay taxes on. For some people, it's capital gains taxes. For some people, um, we have to worry about taxes on Social Security. But you know what? They're all tied together. And we, if we can structure a plan to tie together your income plan, your tax plan, your asset allocation strategy, if we can tie those three things together, we can minimize your taxes over your lifetime. Another thing to think about, right now in today's day and age, taxes are relatively low. Uh, today, as I'm recording this, we looked at the U.S. debt clock, and the U.S. debt clock was over $27 trillion. As that continues to go up, you have to believe that our government is going to need to find a way to increase revenue into their coffers. And what's one of the few ways they can do that? That's an increase in taxes. So for a lot of people right now in your retirement, it may be the time we want to recognize revenue so that we don't have to in the future. But you have to understand how your situation works. The thought process of put money in your 401ks, put money in your IRAs, you're gonna be in a lower tax bracket when you retire. For some people, that's true, but for the vast majority, it's, it's really not. For the vast majority of people, they are in the same, if not a higher tax bracket, and sometimes, they don't even realize it. They have these required minimum distributions that kick in and all these different forced incomes that come into play that they were paying no taxes at all for a few years and all of a sudden, wham, 
they get hit with higher taxes. Uh, again, taxes and retirement is not the most riveting topic in the world, but there's a lot of deep dives that you need to do in order to minimize those taxes so that for the rest of your life, you don't have to worry about what happens if Uncle Sam decides to increase his revenue or if you need more money, you want to be able to put yourself in the most advantageous, the most uh, have the most control for yourself as humanly possible. I hope you got some value out of the video you just watched. And if you know somebody else that might benefit from seeing this, please share it with them. Uh, and to see future videos that we uh, produce and put out, please subscribe to our channel.